Okay, this will be an introduction to the Momentum Lab, just kind of giving you a visual picture of what the lab is going to look like. Um, this is not a substitute for reading the lab, so please make sure that you do that before anything. Uh, if you have any questions uh, and you ask me, and I know it's in the lab, I'm not just going to point you back to the lab, so please read it first. Um, other side note, uh, I have done this lab with both type of tracks. Um, I don't know what you've seen so far in the class so far, but this is one uh, in which it's just kind of a aluminum track and these guys are just pushed in general. Maybe I'm using both, I don't know. Uh, but I've also used the air tracks in different years. So um, <clears throat> you might see both. Uh, that, meant, that might mean on the makeup data that the numbers are slightly different depending on which car I'm specifically using. I think these guys have more of a mass than the air track cars do. So the purpose of the Momentum Lab is to confirm the conservation of momentum in real life to show you that, yeah, this is a legitimate thing that definitely uh, that definitely happens. You know the, con the um, equation for momentum, and here's the equation for conservation of momentum. But let's talk real quick about the procedure and highlight a few things. First thing, make sure that the track is balanced. The easiest way to do this is put your car in the middle. Just make sure that it doesn't have a tendency one way or the other. If you're using this kind of track that's in the picture right here, you're going to need to use books and papers to kind of adjust it up and down to make sure it's balanced. If you're using the air track on the feet, you can adjust those up and down so that it is balanced. Also, heads up, the tables aren't perfectly level, so you might need to move it a little bit around the table. Okay. Then basically all you're going to do is you're going to toss one of the cars into uh, the second car, which is not moving in both cases. And we're going to do this for both an elastic and an inelastic collision. So for an elastic collision, let's just show you a video of that real quick. Go. Notice I stop the first car so it doesn't bounce back, and the second car is still moving, so we need to capture that velocity even though it's relatively slow. And now you're done. So uh, you'll notice that there are two photo gates right here. Each photo gate has the ability to use memory, which is important because if you'll notice, this photo gate actually had to capture two times. The first, uh, let's see here, let's see it again, obviously right. Here, the first one, it goes through, and then the second time. So you're going to need to use the memory function on that. Um, for the memory function, I'll just say, look down here. Um, it talks about how to use the memory function. Just read carefully. I will just highlight this real quick. Um, when you use the memory function, the number that you see is going to be the total of the first and the second measurements. So to get the actual second measurement, you just need to subtract the first off of that. And then uh, this equation right here is just a reminder of how we found velocity with that. And you've hopefully already done that, so that's not a problem. So you should do the elastic. Um, the elastic, as I said, will require two bases because it makes three measurements. And then um, you'll do that for just tossing it, tossing a little faster, which again is going to be entirely with your hand. Increase the mass of the first car, increase the mass of the second car. Um, and then you're going to do, that's all elastic that you'll do first. And then you're going to do everything again with an inelastic collision. So an inelastic collision, there's a couple ways to do it. In this case, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's a little bit of a cork with like a needle that sticks into it. So, and then I've got one over here that'll collect and you'll see that they'll kind of stick together. The other way to do it is with Velcro on both sides. Uh, the other way to do it is with magnets. So there's a, hand, a handful of ways, but all of them are essentially the same. And this is a perfectly inelastic collision and what it looks like. Now you'll notice with a perfectly inelastic collision that you only need one flag. <clears throat> um, I'm using two setups, but actually you can use a setup with an extension that we've used in previous ones and then just use the memory function because you only need to make two measurements. And that would be the measurement to get the velocity initial of the car and then the measurement to get the velocity final of both cars together, moving together at that time. So uh, you can do a perfectly inelastic collision with just one of these as opposed to needing two, which might be necessary because sometimes we run out of resources throughout the room. Uh, once you're done with that, again, you're going to do all four of those for the perfectly inelastic collision. <clears throat> and uh, I'll let you read all the measurement stuff there. For your grade at the end, um, you're going to fill out the measurement sheet that you can find on Google Classroom or whatever website we're using. Um, draw a momentum diagram for each collision, which again, I will go over in kind of the results real fast. Um, Check the elastic uh, elastic uh, collision number one and, and inelastic collision number one and, and see if kinetic energy is conserved. Um, explain for each of those types of collisions if you expect it to be conserved. And if it's not, um, 
then it will either way. If it is, explain why it is. If it isn't, just explain your results, essentially. And then finally, you write a paragraph that explains clearly the objective of the lab, which was, is conservation of momentum seen in the lab? And explain, do your results actually show that and support all of your answers with evidence? And that's how you do this lab.